Hello everyone, I'm Paul and welcome to your Legion. Well everyone, it's that time of the year again. Yes, the time of the year that we all wait for for that great launch and this time it happens to be Intel. Intel has launched their new Skylake processor, a new chipset with the Z170, and much, much more is ready to be coming at IDF here later on in August. So, what can I tell you about this chip? Well, first off, it's new, it's a new architecture, but they haven't given me any, any I guess you could say, any diagrams, so I can't tell you what it is. We have to wait for IDF for that. But we do have unlocked cores. Of course, the 6770K, which I will be talking about today, has a 4 gigahertz frequency with a 4.2 boost. I, did, I was able to get it to 4.8 on an overclock, and that was with just under 1.4 volts on the core. Yeah, it does require a lot of, lot of voltage. Also, it's 93 watts, so you're going to get lower power consumption. You're going to get a cooler, a cooler temperature on your chip. I was averaging on idle about 26, and I'm in Florida, and it's been hot. So we got a lot of good stuff, but unfortunately, I have to talk about the bad stuff. I am totally frustrated, everyone. When I say frustrate, I'm frustrated so much that I am actually recording this right now probably six, seven hours before the actual launch. And the reason why is due to incompatibilities. I've had a lot of problem with incompatibilities. The DDR4 memory, now, we know that Intel has gone DDR4 quad channel with the X99. So you would figure that the memory manufacturers or the motherboard manufacturers would have had everything friggin' down. But no. Four sets of memory, I had four sets of memory compatibility problems. IRQ errors, I had divide less than zero errors, you name it, I was getting errors intermittently on every motherboard that I've tested. So far, that's been three, but there are others out there. Now, is this due to Intel rushing this launch, or is it due to the motherboard manufacturers not testing and qualifying all the pre-existing DDR4 memory that was out there, and maybe just doing some of this new stuff that is te technically non-existent at this time? I figured it this way. Why should I make a call to a manufacturer of DDR4 memory when I already have four sets, four kits of DDR4 memory? Something's got to work. Well, no, it didn't. So I was having problems. I had problems benchmarking it. One thing I can tell you, by what I have seen so far, we've got a 10% increase. Yes, even Intel says 10% increase. I want to say closer to 12, but let's say there's 10% increase in performance over the prior generation, and that, of course, is Devil's Canyon, which is the 40, 4790K. Um, now, also, if you remember the 5775C that we looked at, I talked about an L4 cache. I was kind of, I, I, I was kind of taken back when they decided to only go with an L3 cache. Usually, if they come out with something prior, that means that the next generation is going to have it, but it doesn't. It only has an L3 cache. The L3 cache is same as it always has been. Basically, by what I could tell you, from what I have seen and what I could benchmark, we got some nice gains. Memory transaction gains are great. Quick sync is awesome. Um, one thing I could say, though, the Iris graphics on the 5775C was a lot better than the, the 530 graphics on this processor. Um, I was actually getting about four to 500 points more in in 3D mark than I did with this, and also three to four frames per second more than I did with this processor. So I don't know, did they step backwards, or is it due to the memory compatibility problems that I had some issues, and maybe I'll get some better, better numbers? But let's go ahead and just at least let me give you a few things. On Cinebench without an overclock, we were roughly getting 922, uh, Nine, well, actually, that was with an overclock, was 922 at 4.7. When I got it up to 4.8, we're actually getting about 10, 1014 to 1016. That's on, on uh, Cinebench, of course. Then, of course, your 3D Mark numbers, uh, I was using a 980 Ti, 4096 for your main numbers. 
Also, Cyberlink. Uh, Cyberlink is something that I use when I'm transcoding a lot. Uh, Media Expresso, different things like that. And QuickSync is very good. Now, what I have to do, of course, is when I'm doing this, I have to unplug it from my discrete card and put it into the onboard video in order to get these numbers. But I actually took one of the videos off of my website, and what I did was I transcoded it with with uh, Cyberlink Media Expresso. And if you want to know what, if you want to test out what I'm saying, you can because you could go ahead and download my DX, um, ac actually, yes, my DX Racer review that I did in the chair that I'm sitting on and transcode it. And what we got was without QuickSync, it took 24 seconds to transcode it to, uh, to, to make it compatible for an iPhone. And with QuickSync, we actually got eight seconds. So, I mean, you're getting, you're getting good qualities out of this processor, but I can't really give you anything s substantial and concrete yet because I've been having problems, like I said, Four sets of memory. I'm having issues. I'm having I'm having compatibility issues. Well, all I could say is everybody, we're just gonna have to wait to see how this pans out. Because I think that this this chipset and this platform is pretty immature at this time. I think Intel might have rushed it. I think the motherboard manufacturers might not have validated enough, or maybe they're having problems with their BIOS because they got they got, you know, the microcode and everything late from Intel and because of the rush. So we're going to have to revisit this. All I want to say is thank you, everybody. I'll see you the next time. Have a great day. Bye-bye.